Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel. That's Rokka. Testing how deep the snow is. I can tell you it's deep. It's at least a meter, full meter of snow and impossible to traverse anywhere else besides on these snowmobile tracks. We're following those Santa or Elf or Christmas gnome, whatever faces you want to call them. That way we are in true North Finnish Lapland. Thanks for joining in. Let's get cracking. There's not that much daylight available when you are this far up north. So <laughs> we are completely the mercy of these tracks. As far as I can tell, this goes the right direction. We have a bit of a crossroads, but luckily the tracks lead in the right direction. I think it says Vieri Harju on the top, the four kilometers. This is what I have to deal with. Hey, just decides to take a leap into the snow and the backpack acts kind of like a life jacket <laughs> preventing him to sink too deep. I don't know, maybe it's just the inner puppy. He is after all only one year and four months or then perhaps he thinks that he can hunt something. Rokka, jatketaanko? Tule, 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 tule. Hyvä. Hyvä, hyvä, tule, tule. Noni. There's not much of gear or weight in general in this backpack, just his bow, extra leash, some treats and first aid kit. And the reason is that he's of course still too young to carry his food, which, which uh, does weigh quite a bit. I would know because I'm carrying it. Both of our food and cook sets and things like that are in the backpack, so the backpack gets lighter throughout this trip. And also, it's good to get him to become used to that backpack for and wearing it for several days in a row. And of course, being bright orange makes it less likely that some old hunter might mistake him for a wolf. There's always that chance. Always take care of your dog first. I'm carrying a bit less than two liters of water with me, which isn't a ton. 0.7 liters on my waist belt and then this 1.2 or 1.25 liters in a bulk. Of course, there's plenty of snow melting 
to be done every day on this trip, but not while we are traveling, obviously. But let's take a look at the map and I'll show you what I mean. All right, uh, well, Kemihara, that's where I started. We are here, obviously, and the place where I'm aiming at is somewhere here and it's not on this map. And then tomorrow, this should be our destination. At least the next location is on my own map. From Vieriharju, looks like not too many uphills, maybe one around here. This was now 10.3 kilometers, so I guess, yeah, it's roughly six more to go. Oh boy, I was worried when this will happen. You probably cannot tell, but there's two reindeers ahead. And here we go. Well, that was a bit too exciting for us. There's so much snow that reindeer have to use these snowmobile tracks and car roads and things like that to get around. While I was driving here, one reindeer actually... Oh, that was deep. <laughs> one reindeer actually jumped off the road into the forest and almost got stuck. There was so much snow. And also, actually, another thing, while I was driving this morning, I listened on the radio, the Finland versus Russia Olympic ice hockey game final. Congratulations, Leijona. Sounded like an epic game. I will probably have to watch it when I get back home. And also, congratulations to Slovakia. You guys played really well this tournament. And coincidentally, we are moving towards the Russian border all the time. In fact, tomorrow's destination is in the border zone and it does require a special permit for us to visit it. And I do have the permit. It's just a matter of getting there with all the snow. Snowmobile track goes there and the final kilometers we are following someone else's trail. But as you can see from Rokka's legs, it's quite soft. But it's definitely the right track. But it's very soft. Very hard to brace ski pole as well. Great looking sunset. <sighs> we are still here. Rokka has been dropping through the snow, sometimes all the way up to his belly, and he's definitely not feeling it. I'm guessing that, let's say, if it really was, like I estimated, six kilometers from the previous hut to this one, we did the first four in an hour or less. And now we're making these last two for at least an hour. But we will make it. Can't be that far away. No. Less than 300 meters. 
first the dog fell through the snow, then I fell through with my poles, and then with my skis, managed to bend my one of these poles. Now we're just trying to get from there to there. This minuscule uphill. And look how deep it is. If I could just get like one and a half meters forward, I could put the skis back on and we could get going. Alright, status update. It's soon half past five. They're melting snow. That's all snow that's going to be melt. My Trangia pots there, fired up the stove. Big tent outside. Yeah, I sw switched to snowshoes. That was the only way to make for the final few hundred meters. Toughest few hundred meters of my life, most likely. I took a quick stroll around, but I didn't spot where the trail should be going, like from here to the next spot where I was planning to go. And there is a possibility that the trail isn't there because it's winter and no snowmobiles have gone through and made it. Uh, my hats off to these fellows who came here before me uh, and, and made the trail for me. But I'm assuming that I will chat with them later this evening or then perhaps tomorrow and ask about the trail, if it exists or not. But yeah, th this was a gamble. I knew it beforehand that there's so much snow over here that if there isn't snowmobile trails, nothing can be done. Luckily, there has been for most of the trails uh, today, good trails, so there is that. But anyway, those are worries for the future. I think I need to add more snow to that big pot so we get to drink soon. Ah, oh, so thirsty. So thirsty. I found two of these sports drink powders from my backpack and I'm so happy that I literally just threw this in as a kind of a last minute addition. I have one cola still left and just drank full bottle with um, citrus flavor stuff. Energy and carbs and hopefully some electrolytes as well. And once again, melting snow, I am reminded of the old saying that ice is roughly 90% water, 10% air, and snow is roughly 90% air, 10% water. Certainly feels that way, <laughs> again, as it does every time I'm melting snow for drinking water. It's going to be a long night. Welcome to my candlelit dinner, evening dinner for one man and perhaps also a bit for one dog. I had to make this. This is the worst tactical food pack there is. Buckwheat, pot and turkey. But I just need a trash bag and this works great for that. Of course I'm going to eat it as well, but anyway, I need it for the bag itself. To go with this, we have a bit of very warm water and some honey mixed into it. And the main course. Now, I believe you could call this blood sausage. Basically, it's pieces of a pig a lot of pig fat or lard, I guess, some blood to give it nice distinctive color and some rye. Mm. This looks completely different than before. Maybe they have changed. 
the ingredients. Anyway, I began to wonder if I even have any neighbors out there in the tent. If there's multiple people inside the tent, they sure are quiet. I think there's at least two pulks and that tent is massive. I think it's a hot tent, but I haven't seen any smoke coming out either. And someone's gear is here, Drangi and stuff like that. There's, I guess, a possibility that this is some kind of a big base camp and they just haven't gotten back yet from their day trip. But it's 10 to 7 in the evening, so hmm. don't know. Anyway, enough blah blah blah. As a certain great YouTuber would say. Mm. Let's pretend that this is my salad. Let's turn on some light. I still have this massive issue to deal with. I can always snowshoe with just one pole, but skiing is a bit difficult. <sighs> anyway, I will see you all tomorrow. Good morning. Good news. I used the propane stove to heat up this pole and sort of bend it back. It has now a couple of extra turns in it, but a lot better than what it was yesterday. And actually, I was correct. That tent was a base camp for a couple of fellows. Came in quite late last night and uh, stayed here for a while and we had a chat and, and, and so forth, ate together. If you recall from yesterday when I diverted right snowmobile track, went straight on, I started following these trails that the guys left behind. But the other snowmobile track actually goes 900 meters north of us. So there's two options now. Either whoever gets going first plows a direct route through here to the north 900 meters through that powdery snow. Or these guys actually went to Korvatuntari Murusta yesterday and they have skied back from there. They have some kind of a trail coming up through this slope. It's a longer route, but it should get me also at least somewhat closer to the snowmobile tracks. But anyway, we are back in business one way or another. Just have to get to the snowmobile tracks because apparently those should lead up to Korvatunturi. So as long as I can get to those tracks, uh, then we should be good to go. But no, I'm still warming up the little hut, drying up my sleeping bag and, and of course clothes in case they didn't dry yesterday. Having my morning coffee and such, then I guess it's time to pack up and start moving again. The two guys went ahead with skis, making the shortcut to the snowmobile track. I'm tracking pulk behind me because and the dog behind the pulk because this is still too mushy however even with three pairs of skis and the pulk it's still not solid enough for the dog who apparently wants to take a shortcut of his own so it will be a tough 900 meters or so for the dog. I'll have to keep an eye out. Oh, it goes back there. Well, we made it. Having a bit of a break. Let's see. 979 meters total time. 
38 minutes of which stopped time 14 minutes and counting. This time, compared to yesterday, I stayed floating most of the time. But of course, it was really tough for the dog. So a bit of a break, then I will get the dog back attached to my waist belt and front. And we start following these tracks, heading over there. Huh. Can you see that? There's a bit of a, what is it called? Halo effect. Pretty cool. <laughs> this is so incredibly easy. I had already forgotten how easy and nice this is. Although we were skiing like this for most of yesterday, but these difficult sections really make it seem like it hasn't been easy at all at any point. Rekko. Looks like he found someone's tracks. Noni. Mennään mennään. Oh yeah. Mennään vaan. Hyvä. Here we are. This is the border zone. No niin, rak. Hyvä. Hyvä. Access without permit forbidden. But we have the permit. And now it's time to literally and metaphorically switch gears. We will leave everything here, make a place for a tent, take just Food, warm clothing, water, and first aid kit. Put snowshoes on and continue going. This will be the home for tonight. Korva tunturi. I'm not exactly sure how long of a hike this will be, but it's now 12 o'clock, so I think we should be back at that tent spot that I just made before it gets dark. Now, one foot in front of the other. Too bad it's rather cloudy today, so I'm not sure if we're going to get any nice views or not, but we'll just have to see. I think it's also time to flip up these climbing supports. We have roughly final 700 meters to go and it looks to be some pretty steep uphill. Then we are there. We are here. 
looks like the guys are still there. I think it's time to get some lunch. So here we are. What a place. Korva <laughs> Tunturi. The little shelter. Maybe two by two meters, if that. The guys finished up their lunch. I made some lunch for myself and for the dog as well. It uh, definitely feels like it's a bit colder up here, or maybe today is colder in general. Bit of a shame that there is so much trash and bottles and things like that left from people. I don't know why they bother to carry all the stuff here and then just leave it. But we left our notes to the guest book and I think it's time to pack things up and do a bit of a tour still. Take a bit of video for you all because this is really a really cool spot to visit. Definitely, definitely worth all the hardships that we have endured during yesterday and today. As small as they might seem on the screen, but they have been really quite tough for us at times. It's 20 past two, took roughly an hour and a half to get here from our campsite. So not bad at all. If it takes roughly the same amount now to get back, I think I should be back by well, before dusk, so we can set up the tent properly and with ease. Hopefully the base that I've made has solidified a bit, so we get good, good night's sleep and good tent spot and so forth. But anyway, let's get outside and take a look at the views. I believe this whole area looked like this just a couple of weeks ago, but there was a bit of a heat wave that impacted Finland and that's why, as you've seen, all the trees in the lower elevation have lost their snow coverage and haven't really accumulated this much as these ones have up here. But I'm glad that I got to see this, at least during today. Really great looking.
I have a stick. I have a stick. I have a stick. It's the best stick. It did it did it. Looks to be maybe minus 14 degrees. <sighs> Tent is up. Has to be my wonkiest setup ever. These two corners are absolutely sagging. We'll make do. Almost all of the gear already inside. And the sun is just about to set, so we are right on time. Quite a bit of moisture inside the tent. It has started snowing outside. I'm just hoping it doesn't snow throughout the night. Otherwise it might make skiing a tad difficult tomorrow and I was counting on it being an easy day tomorrow. Pokka is there taking a nap as usual. A bit of a different setup compared to last time. I think I got the stove going. So we of course now start to melt some snow. I have all the firewood there. I won't be setting up the stove in the morning at all. So I try to keep these vents open and get the pile of firewood gone tonight. I have now my wool gloves drying up here, thicker gloves over there, and these are actually my um, stove handling gloves. <laughs> Any type of these pre-stried meals, which is potatoes and something, usually with bacon, I don't know, those just seem to work after long day outside, especially during winter. Feet are a bit cold because inner boots and socks are, of course, damp from today. We'll have to probably step outside still at some point during this evening. It's 20 past 6 right now and it is still snowing. So it's also good to step out to see what's the situation with that. You can clearly see the condensation line. This has frosted and above it all around. It's nothing. But unfortunately it also means that now as I'm going to bed, as soon as this thing dies down, there will be a lot of condensation all over. But the good thing is that I've gotten rid of most of the firewood, which means that there's going to be plenty of space in the pulk tomorrow. So I'm thinking that I will probably just throw this tent inside the IKEA bag into the front of the pulk and worry about folding it to its own carrying sack then later. I'm almost done with all the snow melting hassle. I've got both the thermoses ready. Drank a bunch of right now. Gave some to Rotka. And now the plan is to have still those two pots ready for morning. And then it is definitely time to call this a day. So I guess I'll see you all tomorrow then when we are back on the snowmobile trail. Good night. Good morning, folks. Minus 15 degrees. Just a bit of snow coming down. No wind whatsoever. Great conditions to ski. Another skier just came by us and he said that the firewood situation is quite bad in the wilderness hut that we are aiming for, which is probably due to the sauna option, but we'll have to 
see the situation than there. I will probably prioritize warming up the sauna rather than the hut <laughs> if I have to make that choice. But now we'll enjoy this overcast but nice day nonetheless. That's the shortcut we took yesterday morning. The world looks a bit different now. We're taking a small break and I'll check his front paws, see if there's some snow accumulation. A bit of fresh snow on the snowmobile trail already has an impact. A lot easier going than that was, that's for sure, but still noticeable. But today's total distance, I guess, is still less than what we did yesterday, so not bad. And super, super quiet. Currently we are on a section of this trail that none of the skiers that we've met have used, and neither have we. And uh, the snowmobile trail is now two days old, completely trampled by reindeer. And of course, there's that bit of fresh snow on top. So I'm almost just walking with skis at this point. But this doesn't last for long before we link up to the same trail that we used during the first day. Yay, it's like downhill. This fellow stayed so still that Rokka almost didn't notice. <laughs> we are almost at the wilderness hut already. Welcome to Vieri Harjo Wilderness Hut. This place is a palace. At least for two of us. It's only 17 past 11 in the morning. I don't think I have ever been this early in my day's destination. And I've never had the chance to really spend a full day at a wilderness hut like this. I've always, if I've used this, usually came in quite late and started early in the morning again. But I haven't checked the firewood situation yet. I figured we'll eat first and if it really is bad then I will definitely not waste firewood trying to warm up this whole place. So in that sense warming up, warming up just the sauna is a much more viable option. And there is flowing water as well. That stream over there is somewhat unfrozen, so that's a major bonus. Everyone we've met on the trail has been saying that the firewood situation over here is very bad, but um, it's not hopeless. I've seen worse. There's saw, which was in pretty bad shape, so I'm trying my own next. And there's axe that is very heavy, so it does its job. I already made some firewood, got the sauna stove going, and a couple of pieces that I had left from my own stove, the, my own firewood that I brought here, those I put to the main cabinets. Um, 
stove to warm it up a bit and I'm drying clothes there and whatnot. But now there's plenty of wood chopping and sewing to do to get that sauna ready for me. Pass us on. That was a pretty amazing experience. I guess there always could have been the option for a bit of a winter swim, but I think the snow wash was enough this time. And unfortunately I don't have cold beer with me, but here's the Coca-Cola sports drink mix with cold water, so almost that good. There has been maybe eight or more people stopping by this cabin today. It is four in the afternoon now. Uh, we saw the two fellows that we've been sort of sharing the trails with throughout these days and also the same skier that I met this morning and uh, four dudes with snowmobiles. Uh, I believe they were uh, kind of the... Oh, lost of words. Anyway, they were doing the maintenance run between these cabins and so forth. And uh, then at least five other backcountry skiers. And uh, yeah, so far none of them have decided to stay here, just have lunch and move on. This is relatively close to the parking lot after all. Tomorrow it will be another 10 kilometers of skiing back to the car, but not a bad place at all. All we'll have to still clean up the ashes from this stove and, and sauna, of course, tomorrow morning. But I made more firewood than I've used heating up the sauna, so I'm good on that front. And uh, I guess rest of the evening is just relaxing and making dinner at some point. Here's the Finnish Lapland and it's many wonders. Welcome again to Joel's candlelight dinner. Today we are cooking something out of these. These are freeze-dried meals, but there's two meals in one bag. And always those two meals are actually two different meals, but somewhat similar. So for example, let's say if this would be pasta bolognese, it would be two different manufacturers pasta bolognese. And in fact, I think I'll go for some pasta today. Mm. Yeah, let's stick with this one. Boil some water. I have no idea how much this would require. Because, after all, I don't know what exactly is in these bags. Then, from the mystery bag... I think we could go with Sriracha Spice Mix. I guess we could go double. It is a double dish, after all. And now we'll let it sit for 10 minutes and then let's come back to it and see what have we done. All right, moment of truth. A bit more like a soup or a stew, I would say. Mm hmm. Not bad. Doesn't taste like sriracha though, but 
at least it has some flavor and doesn't taste like cheap uh, backpacking meal. Like I've mentioned many times, I do like my freeze-dried meals, but they are of course very expensive, especially considering the calorie count in any of the good ones that don't have tons of palm oil and things like that, other fillers. I do purchase them almost always from different discounts and so forth. And in fact, now I found a discount where individual meal was three euros, I think, 325, 350, somewhere around there. So I've got a bunch of them. Happens to be the same brand that I also got quite a bit stacked from the latest military exercise that I attended. So same brand the Finnish Defense Forces uses. Mm. This turned out actually to be quite good. I need to be mixing different meals more often. I think it's time for us to call it a day. I'll catch up with you all in the morning. Good morning, folks. Crispy, crispy final morning indeed. There's a temperature meter outside and it showed roughly minus 22 degrees Celsius. And of course, I, I didn't really heat this cabin up yesterday. It has gotten again quite chilly inside here as well. But our drinking water wasn't frozen solid yet and the propane stove did its job quickly so we have something hot to eat and drink very soon. Already made a special dish for Rokka as well. He actually woke me up 6.42. 6.42 and uh, yeah we've been slowly doing things since. I already took care of the um, ashes both here and at the sauna and things like that. But moving around and, and doing anything is, well, it's not difficult. It's just slow, especially when you have this much clothing on. At least it is for me, not for Rocco, apparently. He hasn't shown any signs of it being cold at all. Even when we were outside, he were just as usual. But on a positive note, as it has been apparently quite cold night, it should make skiing quite easy and fast. We are back on the trail and the going is good. Rokka has actually started to pull me a couple of times. Because the ground is so firm that it doesn't sink in at all. And as suspected, GoPro died immediately. I got to take that one shot in front of the wilderness hut and that was it. <laughs> they just don't like. It's not even the battery issue, it's just the whole, whole camera just stops working. 
so I guess not a lot of filming today because I have the camera, tripods and things like that for the phone back there. And uh, it looks like we are not stopping anytime soon. But I'm quite happy how Rokka has fared during this trip. There's still plenty of training to be done. That is for certain and he does throw a bit of temper tantrums every now and then and you know lost his faith in me and my trail choices <laughs> earlier on but that's really not something to blame him on but anyway he seems to be enjoying our outings quite a bit and that's the main thing that was the main reason for getting a new dog so I could have a bit of a companionship in my travels Misty. I feel like every day I've begun to look more and more like this guy. So maybe those weren't trail markers after all, but warning signs. <laughs> but I think this now marks the end of our little adventure. Four days in beautiful, absolutely amazing Finnish Lapland during February, now in the books. Many great experiences that I will be fondly remembering for a long time. But thank you all again for joining us on this trip, our little adventure. This one's Rokka, the Alaska Malamute. My name is Joel. You might be watching Taival Outdoors. I will see you all again in the next one.